So, I'm making another video on this uh, Cisco C240 M3 server. It's been running for probably about a week now. I've just been letting it run folding at home because I didn't really have any official plans of what I was going to do next yet. Um, and it's been doing a good job of that. It's been at a 100% load on all cores for quite some time. and. I think it was giving me like 80,000 points a day, whatever that even means, I don't know. But I have some free time again, and I want to try putting that video card in there, which is a RX 580 4GB. And the reason I chose this particular card is because it extends beyond the slot cover. And I'm hoping, <laughs> we'll find out at least, I have a hunch this will fit because of how the uh, risers are um, laid out. You can actually fit that RX 580 in a Dell PowerEdge R720 server, but you end up having to get rid of one of the riser cards to do it. So yeah, that's, that's not, uh, that doesn't make sense, obviously. So hopefully my theory is correct. Otherwise this is gonna be a disappointing video. Also, still don't understand. Granted, I didn't read the manual, but what's the story of this slot? It's like extra long, and I don't know why. Yeah, it's a lot longer than a it's X16. It's like four extra lanes long. That's weird. Now, one thing I didn't take into consideration is the length of this card, which I think, ooh, I'm just barely going to skate by. If it's kind of hoping that I don't blow up this card. I might uh, step away and double check the, the specifications of this slot real quick before I power on the server. But I did do a tiny bit of reading. Ooh. <laughs> and uh, it, the documentation did lay out Tesla video card compatibility, which I think was K80 and like K40. 40 or something like that. Hmm. Well, so that's going to be a problem. This retention mechanism is not going to work. Also, this is very unfortunate. I don't think this card's going to get any airflow. The fans spin, but I don't know where they're going to get the air from. I don't know which way these blow either. I think they blow the air down into the heat sink, so. Yeah. Um, I think that retention mechanism is going to be in its home for me to put this in. I wonder if there's a way where I can... Oh, I can. Alright, well, I am going to remove that. Let's see if I can zoom in. I'm going to have to get under there with the flathead screwdriver and just release the tension so I can pop this out. I don't need it. I don't care. Um... Also, I'm just going to double check the documentation, make sure I don't blow up my card by putting it in a slot that I shouldn't be, but I'm fairly confident that should be okay. All right, so I'm back. I uh, read through the documentation and yeah, that does support GPU. There's a variety of GPUs that they have validated basically, but based on my experience with the R720s, <laughs> It only means so much. So I'm kind of curious to see what's going to happen here. Also, the documentation did specify dual GPU support, so that means that one of the GPUs would go in this far riser assembly, and then one would go in this one. Since this uh, retention mechanism isn't compatible with my card, I'm going to have to use a flathead screwdriver to release it from where it is. There we go. And now I should be able to shove this uh, riser assembly back into the server. Yeah, that'll line up. But before I get ahead of myself, I think I'm going to plug in this power. 
this cable is extremely long, so it'll be a little silly in there, but no big deal. One thing that actually would work really nice with this cable, if I was running dual GPUs, oh no, it's keyed. I'd have to cut the keying, but as I say, I could plug it in backwards and then run it, but yeah, that's if I'm willing to cut the keying on this 8-pin, since all uh, eight of these connectors should be wired the same. But I don't plan on running more than one GPU in this server, so that's irrelevant. I'm gonna get to the 8 pin. I think I'm gonna do this connector. Yep, we're good. Let's go off camera for a second to look. There we go. Alright, well, got a GPU installed with uh, this riser. Uh, there's obviously length restrictions. So it can't go past this point about here. So your video card's gonna be nine and a half inches long to be safe, I'd say, up to 10, give or take. Height's not so big of a deal since I got this void, although there is a pin. Let's see if I can show that. There's a pin right there that would get in the way. You could just shear that off. I don't know what these particular pieces are here for, since previously there's just this plastic baffle there. There might be some upgrade module or something that, that goes in that spot, but I do not know how big this card is. I might try to put a dimensions in the description of the video. But since this is higher than a standard height card though, it does fit in here. And I still could put a second card in the server if I wanted to. I estimate this card's about five inches tall though, from where the bottom of the PCP is to the top of the shroud. So, this will be interesting. Hopefully no fire. That's the goal. No fire, no dead video card. Just want everything to work and be happy. Got to think here. That's plugged in. Everything else is fine. I don't think this is seated all the way. That might be important. There we go. All right. Good thing I didn't plug that in. I think I'm going to stop the recording and let it power cycle into its thing, and then I'll be back. All right. Well, so a day has passed. Lots of problems. I don't know what's wrong with this server, but it keeps telling me I have memory issues. It's uh, There's trouble lights for these three on, on this side of the server. I might have to run some diagnostics, but moving the sticks around didn't move the error lights around to a different slot, so I think there's something else going there. Also, as I'm sure you can hear, it's loud. <laughs> um, Currently, I have both CPUs under a heavy load, and I have the GPU doing a task as well, and I had to take the cover off, because I thought the thing was going to melt. Um, there's just not proper airflow with this design. With the R720, since the video card went upside down compared to how it is now, um, there were better airflow capabilities. This, basically, there's no gap between those fans. Like, if I push down on that metal cover, it's going to rub on the fans, or even cause them to seize up, for all I know. So, that's kind of an unfortunate thing. But, it did, uh, did work out without a hitch. I have the video card passed through to the virtual machine. I didn't have to do any additional setup in BIOS like I thought I was going to do for PCI pass-through. And yeah, everything's working as expected, other than the thermals. It might be better if I could control the fan speeds and make them go even higher. But unfortunately, as previously mentioned, the web interface for the management of the server 
is flash based. So in the end this will probably be the last video I do with this server just because this server has been annoying to work with this whole time. It's been difficult to manage and it's been throwing errors that I cannot figure out. So yeah, I would say if if you're going to do something like this with one of these and put a video card in it, my best recommendation would be to make sure it's one that is either a blower style or you know supported by Cisco. The the Tesla cards are an example of the cards that are supported by these since they have passive heat sinks with straight through airflow. I'm not finding any issues with power that I'm aware of. I can't really check since the management's flash based. <laughs> Another problem there. But uh, the CPUs are 95 watts TDP and GPUs is saying that that video card's drawing about 75 watts, which seems low, but I don't know. I can't imagine right now I'm drawing more than 500 watts with this thing loaded down full of RAM. If I added more drives, I might have a little bit to worry about because I don't know if these power supplies are in redundant or um, non-redundant configuration. And considering I could fill this full of drives, I only have six drives in there out of the 24. Granted, if you did SSDs, it would be a little less of an issue, but I have, I think those are 10k RPM, 300 gig drives. So, yeah. Um, I think I'll pull, the next clip will be of me pulling up uh, the VMware and stuff and showing what's going on. All right, well, you'll have to excuse the noise in the background. My cat's having fun in my office and I didn't feel like kicking him out. So here's the management console for VMware. And currently, as you can see, the CPU is 100% maxed out. I've uh, provisioned eight cores per VM and there's 16 cores total. So these two VMs have basically full reign of the server minus memory limitations I've applied. This is the VM that is running with the video card, and then this is the VM that is just doing nothing. It's uh, running folding at home right now. It is getting a little toasty in the room that I have that server in. It's been running the current task for, gosh, I think about four hours now, and it's a little four. It's a little hundred square foot room, so <laughs> putting out some heat. And this is this the console view, give you a better view of what's going on. The video card is struggling to cool itself. The fans are going as fast as I'm letting them. I could take them up to 100%, but I didn't notice any obvious difference, so I figured, well, let's not beat on them too hard. As you see, the CPU is maxed out, all the cores. And then task manager is just kind of showing the same thing with GPU. But yeah, so the video card works in this server, had no issues. I can show it in device manager even. There it is. Setting up the pass-through process was no different than any other VM I've worked on with giving a GPU support. And just a simple matter of, uh, why is that there? <laughs> um, just simple matter of adding the uh, relevant hardware. So yeah, that's kind of interesting. Everything works fine. I, Since I can't manage it, I have no way to know what the power utilization is on the server side of things, but I have a general idea at least with what I know and then what I can tell in Windows. I close GPU-Z. Looks 
looks like it's drawing a little bit more power actually. It's up to 100. Oh, that's just the GPU chip. I see. A little different than the NVIDIA ones. The NVIDIA ones will tell me the whole card. So maybe a little bit more power than I thought. <laughs> but yeah, so thanks for watching.